Hello again, diecast collectors. So today I have three new old stock Aoshima Grachan collection cars. Um, it's really hard to find information on the old Grachan collections. I know this one comes from Grachan collection number two, which came out in 2008. And I think these are between Grachan collections three and eight. I can't find any info on those things. So anyways, we'll, we'll see what's going on. So yeah, this tape here was halfway cut or seem to be new cars. Let's take a look here, take it off the stand. So this first car is a Nissan Skyline, this fourth generation Skyline, body code C110. It's also known as the Ken Mary Skyline, but this one seems to be quite modified. This one's from 72, I guess. But it's quite modified because the front end and the rear end are totally different. So this might be a Liberty Walk kind of uh, modification. Uh, the standard Skyline has two headlights up front and also two tail lamps, but clearly this is modified with these... I don't know how to describe those. They're not jelly bean shaped, but uh, they're rectangular, rounded rectangular, but angled headlights. So that's the best way I could describe it. And also this grill isn't a stock grill either, so it's quite interesting uh, styling there. And, uh, well, let's just get to the model because they don't have any other statistics here. Unfortunately, the roof is bubbling up here. So, 2008, 12, 13-year-old car, some paint rash going on, it's too bad. Painted on uh, turn signals there. I wish there was some detail behind the plastic lenses, like a little dot or something, to indicate a, a lamp, a light bulb. Too bad. Standard Aoshima, the, having the blanked off wheels, you know, no air between the spokes, it's too bad. This is an interesting paint, actually, it's, uh, it's red metallic but it's kind of translucent. Like you can see in the body gaps, it's really light on the edges where the paint's thin, but it's really dark where there's a lot of paint inside the panel gap. So it's metallic but translucent at the same time. It's not blocking all the, uh, the zinc behind it. So it's different for, my, for me at least. Okay, so we got the little silver uh, gas cap there. And then this is the four door vehicle again stock skyline has four lights two and two but this is a aftermarket body kit I guess or customized so but these are translucent plastic you can see the depth of the red there is pretty neat okay a white license plate and a bit of an angle and then we have this silver tip uh, paint here on the exhaust pipes pretty thin exhaust tips actually all right so this wing pretty nicely painted and done Okay, some black interior, silver window trim. How about this side? Ooh, this side again, some paint bubbling up. So too bad. Okay, there is a lot of molded detail on the interior. I just don't think you can see much of it because it's all black. Okay, on the bottom, Aoshima doesn't really do much. Just their brand. Doesn't tell you the car. The tires seem to be treaded, but they're equal size. I don't think that would happen in real life. You know, why is this rear one so inset to the body, right? It's really underneath the fender. Oh, oh that's why, because it's all sunk into the bodywork. Okay, makes sense. Okay, well, it's a shame about the paint rash, but there aren't many chances to get a new old stock Yoshima Grachan from the second collection, because right now they're selling the 12th collection, so this is 10 collections old, so not much choice. Oh well. Okay, let's see here. I'll put this on here as I open up the next one. So the next one is a Toyota Soarer body code MZ10 from 1981. And uh, the Soarer was sold between this 1981 with this model car and then up until 2005. And later on, it was pretty much became the Lexus SC series, the later generations. Okay, so this one here has a kind of a gray base plate. Well, I guess I'll just take it off the base plate for you guys. All right, so being the first generation Soarer, this was sold from 81 to 85. Okay, and there's a choice of two up to three liter inline sixes up front in its rear wheel drive. And the Soarer was only sold as a coupe. There were no two door versions or anything like that. So. All right, let's get into the casting here. Really nice paint here, you know, we got this two-tone. The silver's really nice. It's not really splotchy, 
like the 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 flakes are really small so it's it's really nice one of the better silvers I've seen them in my collection now what's not so nice is this thing I think what's going on there some bad casting okay interesting body kit there some silver trim around the windows and then this red I think this is just a normal metallic it's not a translucent red kind of like this last one See with this one, you get the silver around the edges because it's not as translucent. But this is just a regular metallic, so you don't get that silver. So it's blocking all the uh, zinc behind it. So, okay. Well, while we're here, we got some nice vents here on the hood, and they are molded in. A little power bolts there. So again, you can see a lot of detail in the bright light, but without the right light, you can't see much at all because it's all black. A little uh, kind of like a bubble mirror, and Aoshima never paints their mirrors on the back side there. Okay, let's see the back of this car. Okay, so we got the thick plastic lenses, really nicely done. I mean, the white backup lights, you can see the orange, the red, it's very good. Blank area for the plate, and then you can see the exhaust tip sticking through, and they seem to have added an extra piece of plastic here, like an underwing. And this is weird, yeah. Different, very, for Aoshima, highly detailed uh, underside, but no Aoshima brand like the last car. Okay, screwed together if you want to maybe paint that interior. Okay, and then look at the tires. Again, they're the same size front and rear. Uh, same as this one, actually. Totally the same. Okay. What's the front of this car look like? All right, so we got the plastic lenses, but I kind of feel like they had they got like a splitter here, so it looks like four two and two headlamps. So that's better than the last car. A little more detail. A little painted in black, flat surface. That's not painted, but the turn signals have a little orange paint there. And an interesting little spoiler lip here. So we got this messiness here. Is it on the other side? No, it's not. Well, not as bad. So, I think the casting here is a little better. I think this is just a paint contaminant right there. But on this side, it looks like the casting and paint contaminants. Or the, it looks like it, this must be where the zinc fold into the mold. And this is where they clipped it out off the sprue. But maybe they clipped it off too much. Oh well. Okay, well, I think it's better than before. Not... Uh, no major paint rash like the last one, so... And I really love this silver. It's such a fine, fine silver. It's not really splotchy like some other diecast I have in my collection. Okay, let's let those two spin. The last one, I think is my favorite. It's also a 1981 model. And this is the Toyota Celica XX. The... It was later, you know, 19... Later on, they just became called the Supra. But the Supra's history began, uh, began with the Celica. It was like a upscale version of a regular Celica. So this is a second generation Celica Supra, a Celica Supra, but in Japan it was called a Celica XX. All right, so, so this, uh, this version was sold between 1981 and 1985, and there's a 2.8 liter inline six up front. Okay, so let's look at this silver again. It seems to be the same. And the bases of these two cars were actually the same color, so I think these must come from the same series. I just don't know what number Grouchon collection. So again, this is a really nice silver. Although it's not clearly broken up, like the Christmas, it looks like it's almost fading into this purple above. A little painted contaminant there. The side molding there. Not sure. We'll see what happens on the other side of the car there. Interesting wheels. They're totally blanked off, but by design. It's like a three piece wheel, but with just a, a flat piece of aluminum for the center of the wheel. It's quite interesting. I like it. I don't think I've seen that wheel design on my other, Aos other Aoshimas. Okay, so let's go to the top here. Eh, pretty plain. Okay. But no paint problems. And no, not much orange peel. Tiny bit there, but this roof 
No orange peel, really. So, that's good. Pretty plain back of an interior. Very boxy interior there, I think you can see it. Seems like this plastic's a little cloudy as well. Okay, in the back, really nice taillights. Look at the depth of that, you know, the depth of the plastic, so really nice. Same treatment here, we got the exhaust tip sticking out of this extra plastic underbody piece. And this, yeah, a lot of extra detail here, just like the last one, so these must be from the same collection. But they've chose to not write the brand name on the bottom, so that's interesting. Okay, let's see about this side here. Yeah, so there's a little... It looks identical to the other side. There's a little chunk missing there. See? So that's by that's on purpose, I guess. Alright, so this side does have the fuel filler door. I didn't notice this bulge before. Is this like a reflector? I think, if I recall, maybe there's a red reflector there on the real car. Oh, what is this thing? There's a little dot there. Is that on the other side? It is not. So that's actually a pretty big paint contaminant, or... It's weird. I'm not sure if that's a paint rash bubble. I feel like it's a contaminant under the paint. But I could be totally wrong. Interesting that the molding of the window trim here is black, it's not silver. So, okay. So no, nothing else wrong there. And it looks like the transition between silver and purple is much crisper here. It's just silver stops, pur metallic purple begins. Whereas on this side, it seems a little bit more, uh, I don't know, not as crisp, I guess. But anyways, I mean, it, it's a nice car. I do like the two-tone effect, especially on the front, because of the blockiness of this section here. It's a nice uh, delineation here of the silver bottom and the purple top. And so these are really thin plastic lenses here. You can see the blinker of the orange, a little depth with the circle. Some black painted in here for these under vents, a little texture here and that tiny little grill there. So that's really well done. Okay, so... Uh, wow, well, this is something I've not never noticed before. You can see the translucency of those taillights. The little hole that's holding those taillights. You can see it there, right? That little red, that's the light shining through the back of these things. So, pretty neat. I'm noticing one odd thing now for Aoshima. They don't have any badging on them. Like, there's nothing saying Toyota, Celica, or anything on any of these cars. But they are modified cars, so they're not stock OEM vehicles. So I guess it's believable if you're going to put a body kit on something, you might go for the clean look and shave all the, the branding off of a car. Okay. Alright, so that's it today. I'm almost done collecting, I think, every one of these Aoshima Grachans. I think I have one more. But again, it's really hard to find information on the older collections, so I'm not exactly sure what cars are out there. But uh, when I think I have the collection finished, I'll do a video of all of them so you guys can maybe get an idea of what you need to collect if you're into this kind of style of vehicle. I like them. You know, the wheels aren't super hot because the spoked ones don't actually have air going through the spokes, but I, I do like the styling of them. Uh, there's something funky about them. Such small diameter wheels on such a big car, and the cars are so slammed to the ground. They're so impractical that I, I like them. Very well. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.